Welcome to the Simply Real Podcast, where we elevate your mind with diverse music, great speakers, and your daily dose of motivation and inspiration with your one and only host, Jennifer Maharaj. After all of them losses, I made some choices when I was younger Now that I'm older, they coach me, I'm just out your flossing Like I've been listening to the dentist, all of my haters mad, they hate it, they can't stand it I'm Thank you for having me again Yes, you have quite a resume there I mean, I didn't even mention half the stuff that you do <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I try to stay busy, I try to stay busy I know, tell us about your label, your record label Yes, um, Casino Gang Records, man. This was a long time coming. Um, I, I always wanted to create my own label. It's been a dream of mine. But it was actually pandemic, uh, the COVID. Um, I actually started my label in April of 2020. So I was very proud to be able to just take a risk and say, hey, um, I'm, I'm ready to jump out there. Um, I've been in the music industry for a couple of years. I've worked with so many different artists and a lot of people like, hey, why don't you just kind of do your own thing? Or they call me a young P. Diddy, you know what I mean? They're like, hey, man, you, you like a young P. Diddy out here. So you might as well do your own thing. So I was just finally able in 2020 um, to create Casino Gang Records where I have my artist, Megan B, who's an amazing vocalist. Uh, my sister, Naomi J, who's also another great vocalist. And then my guy, Brand of Brain, um, and uh, I got a few more people that I haven't officially signed, but uh, they'll be joining the roster uh, in the near future. Nice. That is so awesome. And, you know, you really are an icon and legend on Clubhouse. Tell us a little bit about how you started off your, your journey with Clubhouse and how that grew so much. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for that. Um, it, it You know, Clubhouse came out of nowhere. I'm sure like it was for you. But, like, I, I, I remember one of my friends, uh, she's an A&R, and she said, hey, a lot of music people are on this app, Clubhouse. You need to get up here. You need to get up here. So at that time, you had to be invited. And so I finally got an invite after waiting a couple of weeks. And then um, I got on there just like everyone else trying to figure out what was going on. Right. <laughs> with people just talking in the room and different things. And um, I was finally able to just decide to do my own room. And I was nervous as ever. And I was like, I, what if nobody comes? What if nobody, you know, likes what I'm talking about? Um, but then, you know, three years later, uh, 30,000 members later, um, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of network connections later um you know we're still hosting the music network and no egos club on clubhouse so definitely i'm a big supporter of clubhouse yeah i've been in your room a couple of times and i can't even tell you the value that you guys provide for the artists that come in there so the artists that come in there they get to play their music and get a little review from you guys right yes yes that's correct we we do it on friday um friday mornings 8 a.m eastern through noon uh, we give uh, independent artists a chance to play their music, kind of like what you guys do with your station, uh, mm -hmm. giving artists a, a, a chance to be heard. But because everybody, you know, nowadays, of course, we have the Internet and different things, but you need to be heard on different platforms you need, and be reached uh, so many different audiences. And the great thing about Clubhouse is a worldwide app. So, you know, you can have fans in Sweden, you can have fans in uh, England. So it's, it's just amazing that uh, we're able to have a platform on that app. Right. And how do you, I mean, in terms of the artists, how do you, what kind of advice would you give them for upcoming artists that are listening into this podcast right now? Um, what I love to tell independent artists, number one, do not give up because it's going to be a lot of hard nights. I wanted to quit multiple times. And now I look back at my career and I'm like, I'm so glad I didn't stop. You know, I'm so glad I was just a few weeks away from that opportunity that I've been waiting on. Uh, uh, when I got the call to work with Pat Poose, I, I was like, I submitted beats like four months beforehand and I thought nothing was going to come about. And then next thing you know, they are rushing me saying, hey, Pat Poose really wants this song. And you know this beat and, and then it turns into, you know, a career. Uh, right. So I say just don't give up. And then um, the second thing I always say is try to find, um, if you're an artist, Try to find a producer that matches your sound. And if you're a producer, try to find an artist and create a sound with them uh, locally. And then that way, you know, once you take over your local area, then more people 
around the United States and worldwide, we'll, we'll start to hear about you as well. So those are my two things for independent artists. So the consistency and staying persistent is what I'm hearing, definitely. And yes. throughout your career, I'm guessing those are the values that you've instilled in your own brand that kind of helped you get to where you are today. Now, tell us a bit about some of the artists that you're working with in terms of those Grammy-nominated people that you have that is on your bill of resume. <laughs> yes. Um, well, one thing why, I, like, I just, just to kind of reference Clubhouse again, network. Your network is so important. Um, a lot of the um, the artists that I was fortunate to work with came through somebody that I knew and someone who had a relationship with that artist or the manager of an artist, uh, because as you can imagine how many people would love to send Beyonce tracks. It'll be everybody, you know, millions of people, but it's only the selected few who actually will get a, a direct opportunity to, you right. know, get an artist to hear your music. So build your network, build relationships with people. And um, definitely work on um, getting your name out there, you know, work on, you know, um, in getting on the radio. This is so many different ways to kind of, you know, get your brand out there. But you definitely, number one, uh, have a great network to get you in those doors. Right. And that makes so much sense to me. And I know your beats are so well known throughout Clubhouse, but even off Clubhouse. And that's amazing. So you get a lot of requests for your beats on a daily basis. And I, I think that's <laughs> Awesome. I mean, I'm really, I'm really just so interested in the process of how you started doing this and how you passed it on to other people. Oh, well, definitely. Um, well, I, I, I first started, I always blame, uh, blame, I always <laughs> give props to my older brother, blame him for bringing me in this mess. But no, uh -huh. I always thank my older brother for uh, exposing me to music. I've always been a big fan of music and my family functions. I DJed, I, I was DJing before I even knew about DJing. So uh, wow. Once I was kind of, you know, uh, I was always interested in sounds and how did they make this beat or how did, you know, why this beat make me want to dance? Like once I start understanding like the how and why and what it takes to do it, then um, I learned from some other Grammy nominated, uh, Grammy award winning producer that I was fortunate, uh, like Notch Raw, who's, uh, you know, worked with Busta Rhymes and Kanye and all these other people to be able to sit underneath people who's done it is another uh, gem that I say is try to find someone who is already in the music business and sit underneath them. Intern. I, I'm intern. I got people coffee before I had, you know, I had no ego, no pride because I wanted it that bad. So I always would say um, whatever you want, you can get it if you work hard and go after it. So I make beats every day. So, you know, and then, you know, I don't get placements every day, but I'm ready if somebody calls my line. I, I want to make sure I'm ready to provide the best music that I can. Right. And now you mentioned that, you know, you have no egos and you have no pride. What do you think about the artists today what, as they're coming up in terms of how they're looking at the industry and taking on the artistry? What are some things that you think that they may need some guidance upon? Oh, man, I, I don't want to sound like, you know, a bitter older person, but I feel <laughs> the entitlement. You know, like it's some some artists that feeling entitled. They haven't even put out one album or, or multiple albums, and they right. feel like they should already be on Jay Z's level or on Beyonce's level. Not realizing, you know, it takes time to learn to, from you know get to point A to Z. You got all the alphabets in between, so it's a, you know it's not a A right to Z. You have to go through each one of those steps. So. I would right. say patience and, and then also knowing that you don't know, we really are new to this situation. So be anxious to learn and less likely to talk. Uh, you know, just more listening, less talking, especially if you're new to the industry that's been going on since the 1940s and, and, and so on. You know what I mean? This music industry has been going on for a long time. Right. So if you think, yeah. you know, you're just going to come in and it's going to be, everybody's going to love you. You're going to sell a million records. No, it's not going for it. That's it not takes, easy, huh? It's not easy, no. To get a million people just to hear your song is not easy. Right. You know, you have to be in multiple markets. Now, if you are in a big city like L.A. or New York, it can be a little bit easier, but it's still difficult to get, um, you know, a, a million people to hear your song and then love your song and then support you and buy it. Um, that's, that's another piece of the puzzle. So just stay humble, work hard, Learn as much as you can because I'm I'm learning and I've been in it over ten years and I just learned something the other day that I didn't know. So 
um, you know, don't rush it. That's what I'll say. And now you talked a lot about the industry changing and shifting so much. And I know social media is one of those things that kind of shifted along with the artistry. Do you think social media is affecting it in a negative way or a positive way for the artists? Because I think that they're using social media, which is great, but then they're also not really going out in the community like the olden days. Mm. Um, that's at least what I see. <laughs> you are on point. You are on point, Jennifer. <laughs> you are so on point. That is exactly what I was going to say. It's a great tool to get discovered. So you can get discovered faster than you ever could in any history of time. I don't think we've been in a time where people can be discovered so fast. I mean, just look at Glorilla. Glorilla was working at Wendy's one day and then next thing you know, she's all, you know, but it, it, it really can help you, but it also hinders you because it speeds up the process. Like, um, I don't know if you, you know, like Ice Spice, a lot of people, you know, talk about Ice Spice. Ice, she did a right. performance. She didn't, she don't know how to perform. She just, you just literally took this girl off the street and then put her on the rolling loud stage and stretch right. for her to No, it, it takes time. And, you know, she's young and it's a lot of young artists coming out where they need polishing. They need time to, you know what I mean? They need time to like say, go to the local uh, fair and perform. You need those right. times where it's only eight people in the club while you're performing. You know what I mean? Like you have to go through those stages. So I think social media, puts people in higher stages than they need to be because they're not ready, you know, just because of the popularity. Right. And I, you made a good point about, sm you know, performing at the smaller stages and the smaller places in the community, because I feel like that helps them master the, the idea of performing for the big stages. So I feel like that's probably why a lot of artists, when they get on the big stages, they're not performing as well, maybe? No, you, that, no that's not, no, maybe. That's exactly what it is. It's, <laughs> It's like going, it's like if you're playing a sport, you got to go through, you know, high school, college, and then professional. And the music industry is the same thing. Like you're coming in fresh, you got to go through, you know, like they call it the, back in the day, the Chitlin circuit, like the little small towns and the, you know what I mean? You like, you got to practice. It's just any, any craft that you do, painting, music, you have to practice. Performing is a, is a, is an art, you know? So if you're not practicing, you sitting at home, if you're not looking in the mirror, performing you closing your eyes at the audience you may not even make eye contact with the audience i remember one time i was at a concert jay-z looked me in my eye and i was hype. i was like jay-z looking at me you know what i mean like but jay-z is a professor he knows if i connect with somebody in the audience they're going to remember that experience but right. you know it's just it but those take years and and multiple uh shows to get to that point because jay-z wasn't like that when he first started but you know he's been through a lot of shows so it shows right. No, definitely. Speaking of Jay-Z, you're mentioning some artists. Who are some of your, um, I guess, inspirations growing up? Oh, man. Uh, of course, Jay-Z, Tupac, um, Biggie. Are you a Biggie fan? <laughs> I'm, I'm now, I, <laughs> I have to say, I'm from Vegas, so it's definitely Tupac, but I'm one of Biggie. Oh, we can't be friends then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, it, I got into some some tussles back then over that too back in the day, so I understand. But uh, but no, I'm I'm a fan of '90s hip hop. Um, that's my era, Same which here. I feel like is uh is a was a it, I feel like it's golden era. Um, but it, it it set the stage for what we what we're doing now. So you know, cannot forget the the '90s, the '80s. Oh, the '80s. Uh, none of those are. <laughs> yes, yes, we can't forget about them guys at all. Right. So I also saw in your resume that you have an after-school uh, program for kids. That is yes. so dope. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, man. I'm so privileged and blessed. Um, it, and it's funny because a lot of, th a lot of times things are, are created because people keep asking for it. And that's kind of how this happened is I have a lot of friends um, who kids may be about 10 years old, 14. Um, I just recently had a 19-year-old um, you know, parent for, of a 19-year-old. Hey, my son wants to learn how to make beats. Like he doesn't want to play the tuba. He don't want to play the drums. He wants to learn how to make beats. And so, and you know, with me, I'm like, man, I got, I'm, you know, I'm getting paid to show people kids how to make beats. I might as well just create a a course. And then it turned into, all right, I was only going to do like a four week course. And then they're like, well, we might want to make it longer. Now, um, one of my board members said we need to make it a nine week course. So pretty much what I'm doing is teaching kids from the age of four to 17 um, the basics on how to make beats. They're going to go through different stages. So 
If you don't know what it takes to make the beat, by the end of uh, the session, you'll know how to be able to make the beat. So, um, teaching them. So young. I didn't know they, they wanted to learn so young. Oh, my God. These kids are, <laughs> you know, they use iPads. They use everything now. These kids are so advanced. So they all you got to do is kind of break it down to them. And a um, great thing with the program that I'm using is fair, is very easy to use. Click of a button. You don't have to really, you know, have equipment. But you can also get equipment as well um, that can help with your production as well. So it is an after school program I'll be uh, launching next month. I have two schools that I'll be working with right now, but I have so many other schools and different people on board. So um, be looking out nationwide, hopefully by uh, nationwide coming soon. So Rothstein School of Beats, um, everything's going to be coming up real soon. That is so awesome. I'm all about kids empowerment. I think we really have to watch out for our kids and it's the values and principles that we're learning. We have to pass on to them. So that's amazing that you're doing that for the kids. Yes, definitely. I, I had the, the boys and girls club when I grew up, I had mentors. I had some great people in my life. Um, so now that I'm, you know, older, it's like, I had that. So I definitely have to give back and, and what a way to give back through music which is one of the best ways to reach kids is through music. They're so in, you know, influenced by music, the dances, TikTok dances. So imagine now you tell a kid, well, I can teach you how to make a beat like that. Right. And, and, then, and then teaching them about music theory and different things that they can use um, later on once they take it a little bit more serious. Right, now you mentioned mentors too. Who are some of your mentors that has helped you shape your foundation of what, what you've become today? Oh yeah, well you know it starts at home first. My dad is my my number one mentor, who uh, who was in my life. Sanders Harris, shout out to my dad. Um, I've had my school teacher um, and basketball coach, um, Coach Clinton Robinson. He was a major mentor to me. And uh, God rest his soul, Coach Cole, I uh, was a basketball player. He told he taught me how to push. That was his number one word. Like when we get tired, keep pushing. So when anytime I get tired, I think about Coach Cole voice telling me, hey, keep pushing. You can get through it. You can make it. So all those uh, those three gentlemen are the probably the, my biggest mentors. But I've had other just other guys I work with, um, other people in the music industry. I have some some big brothers in the music industry who who've done it, but more bigger than I have. But um, they show me the same love and respect. So, you know, I, I definitely want to shout out to them guys as well. Yeah, mentors are so important to really help you build that foundation. They give you those values. So that's definitely something important for artists to have today as well, I, I think, at least. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I agree. <laughs> so I see that there's something called a cookout that you are a featured producer of, which has over 300,000 streams, if I'm correct, and is being nominated for the Grammys. <laughs> yes, we, we are closer. We almost at 500 now. We, we wow. about 450 now. So. Uh, from I need to update that, but yes, um, the cookout is actually the genius of D Bot. Shout out to my guy D Bot, who's a um, you know moderator, co-creator of the Music Network and the Eagles Club on Clubhouse. Um, he created a uh, music summit where producers and artists and engineers can all get to one place. That's why we call it a cookout. It feels like a family environment when you get there because it's real comfortable. We go to professional studios. Um, we go to six cities each year. This year, we only we brought it down to four, but um, we usually are in LA, Atlanta, um, Charlotte, or DC. So we go to all we go to East and West Coast. Um, but yeah, it's for anybody can sign up. Um, you, you need to bring your pin game because you have to write everything there. We don't want to hear none of your already written raps. Because I'm bringing new beats. I'm bringing my beats. Box, who's also a platinum Grammy uh, nominated producer, he's bringing beats. We have my, uh, other producers there as well. So if you want a chance to work with a producer who will take the record from the beginning all the way to the end of the record, then you want to definitely make your way to the cookout. Uh, matter of fact, I'll be in uh, Houston on Wednesday for the Wednesday uh, the winter cookout in Houston, Texas this uh, Wednesday. So we, we, you know, we're still going. We're still going with that. So. Shout so out to the cookout team. Right. So it's more like workshops. It's not just a summit then, right, that, that you have at this event. Yes, we have uh, how to become a uh, – to go from beat maker to producer. Um, that's where we teach people who – we you start out as a beat maker, you know, and then we teach you how to become a producer. Um, then there's songwriters class. They teach you about how to write songs. 
as well as a publishing class that tells you about how to register for ASCAP and different and BMI. Um, so we, we have the ed, it's edutainment as we call it, edutainment. So we, we teach you something and then we have some entertainment with the music and and uh, we're already working on that. Uh, cook, we are, the cookout volume one, that's the one you were speaking of, is like I said, about to go go, but we're working on volume two um, already. It's going to be released this year. So we, we're, we're still working. So if you want to come to the cookout, get on a Grammy, uh, you know, submitted album, because this, the next album definitely going to the Grammys again. So um, oh, I, and, I can see, um, that. I can see yes. that with your confidence. <laughs> your confidence is going to the Grammys. <laughs> Hello. And, and I have an announcement around June or July. So uh, they got something to do with the Grammy. So I'm, gonna, I'm giving you the exclusive. June or July, y'all going to hear something about hey, both. You got Grammys. the exclusive. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Definitely. Now tell us about your new album. I know you have a new song that just dropped. Tell us a bit about yes. that. We're definitely going to play that track uh, on Nation Radio. Hello. This is called Win. Like, this is our mantra for 23. All wins and no losses. Uh, it's just a motivational record you can play in the morning, you can play at night, you can play anytime. If you're feeling down or you're feeling like, you know, I'm having a bad week or anything, put this record on and you're going to get up and move and you're going to believe. And, you know, it says through the struggle, through everything, we're going to win. So we're just trying to keep people motivated. We know we've been through some rough years. So now in 23, it's all about winning, man. We we made it through, you know, the the, the COVID season and different things. So now we're just trying to win. Yeah, and I did hear the track. It's so motivational. It's a really good track, a really, really great track. So we definitely are going to have that for our listeners coming up on Funk Nation Radio as well. So we can't wait to play that track for them. Let us know what else you have going on. How else can we support you? Any collaborations, any other events, any other albums dropping? Hello. You know, you know, I'm working over here, Jennifer. You know, I'm working. I know so, you're grinding. I know, you know that. <laughs> you know that. So um, I actually have my beat tape. I, I release two beat, beat tapes a year. I've been doing it for the past three years. Um, my new beat tape on February 3rd this year called Play to Win. And th- I didn't even know we were going to have the single win when I had my title Play to Win. So that was just confirmation that, you know, we're going to win because anything I do, I'm from Vegas. We know we gotta play to win because the house always house is gonna win, but you gotta play to win too. So, right. um, so yeah, that's my beat tape coming out February third. Uh, we're gonna have Megan B, who her album dropped um, in December. It's called Mood. I produced the whole thing off of. I uh, actually it's my first release off of my Casino Gang record label. So if y'all get a chance, I'm gonna send you some music from her as well. Yes. Megan B. Mood um, is you know you can find it anywhere on the streaming sites. And then last but not least, um, I'm coming out with an album. So wow. <laughs> I am having my own right. album. Hello. Now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like a lot of people don't know, um, I actually was signed uh, back like in the early, well, 2008, 2009, I was signed for like a rapper slash producer. Um, but, you know, it was, I, that's when I, I learned about the music industry then, you know what I mean? Because it was the kind of, you know, the learning lesson, but it was still like, I could, you know, I got finessed a little bit. But I had to, that's what I had to learn, you know, that's, you know, the years ago. So now um, I'm sitting on all this material, all this music. I still record music in my in my spare time. I'm, so I'm going to go ahead and put my album out that's going to be dropping uh, on my birthday, March 22nd this year. Um, I produced the whole thing. I got a bunch of features because I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be a rapper, but I got a few things I need to say. Right. So, so yeah, so that's, that's the, uh, the other thing that I'm really focused on finishing up my album. Um, that's so yeah, that's, that's what I got going on right now. I was in your room the other day and you had a great topic about motivation and your song is about motivation. What are some things that you do for yourself to keep motivated and keep that mindset going? Man, well, I mean, what what I do is number one is pray. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a big in my prayer life because I know I've been through some things, and I'm like, only way I was making it through is with God's help. So I pray and I ask God to keep me motivated, to keep my heart uh, focused on my goals. Uh, there was a couple times I, you know, like I said, I wanted to quit a couple times. So I think about those moments. I think about man, if you would have quit. We wouldn't be here where we're at now. I wouldn't be talking to you right now if I would have quit with right. you know what I had going on. So what how I stay motivated is remembering 
hey, you didn't quit then, now look where you're at. So think about if you don't quit now, you know, a year from now, two years from now, where are you going to be? So I, I just constantly keep myself reminded of, man, you was about to quit, my guy. Do you know you was about to quit and you're going to be missing out on doing, you know what I mean? You're missing out on doing right. all these things. So once I realized that, that it's important for me not to quit, not to give up. Life is a, ra- a marathon. Nipsey Hussle is one of my favorite, uh, you know, MC. It's a marathon. And if you know that, you you you, you uh, pace yourself. And sometimes you might speed up, run a little faster. Sometimes you might walk. But as long as you keep going, keep going every single day, you're blessed to wake up and keep going, then, you know, that's how I stay motivated. I love that. We got to tell the artists that on Clubhouse because I've been having some conversations with them and some of them said they feel a little, I guess they lose confidence when they come onto Clubhouse and get the music reviews and they hear people don't like their music. So I, they, they have to take a page out of your book, I think. <laughs> yeah, like you, you're going to, you have to go through those processes. I, I call it your ugly phase. You know, like, you know, you go through your ugly phase and next thing you know, you pop out the next year, you look beautiful, everybody. Like, I'm the same person last year, but you know, you just, but you went through that phase. You you know, you went through people laughing at you. You went through people calling your name. But then when you, you know, pop out and you go and you're, you know, and you, you persevere through it, you're going to be better than ever. So any, yeah, for any artist out there, trust me, it, it looks like nothing's going to happen. It looks like nothing's going to happen for you. But that's when you keep believing when because once it does, you're going to be like, see, I knew it was going to happen for me. It was times, like I said, I didn't believe it. I'm making all these beats, people telling me how good I am, this, that, and the other. But, where, you know, where's my recognition? Where's, you know, this, that, and the other? But, you know, God is good. That's all I got to say. Yeah, it takes time to get to where you want to get to. Well, we I definitely appreciate your time being here with us on Funk Nation Radio. Let the listeners know where they can reach you. How can they get in contact with you? How can they see all your stuff, all your social media handles? All right. Well, everything is Rothstein Beats. You Google Rothstein Beats, you're going to find all my information. So that's another thing, artists. Make sure all your names match on the platforms. I don't want to, you know, have to try to find you in other names. Like, make sure... If you go to any platform and type in Rothstein Beach, you're going to see my name because I'm super intentional about nobody, for one, taking my name, you know what I mean? Um, or somebody trying to make a fake page, and I've had all those things happen. So um, Rothstein Beats, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse, come come follow me on Clubhouse, come to the Rome Music Network and No Egos, uh, YouTube, same thing. So um, just be on the lookout, man. I got a lot of big things coming up this year. And, um, you know, hopefully movies, you know, just be on the lookout. Just be on the lookout. Too, movies, too. <laughs> I got to add a slash. I got, I never acted before, so I'm adding, you know, I'm adding that slash next. Nice, nice. And, by the way, your website is so nice. Very, very well done. Mm-hmm. And so I got to say, you got to tell artists they got to get a website going for everyone who's an artist out there. It's not like, I think people think that they can use their social media page for their website. No, get you an exclusive website with your name. And it's all about you. And you can put whatever you want up there, picture, music, all that. So you control your narrative if if something happens to your uh, Instagram account or anything like that. You have a backup. So um, definitely get a get a website. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, thank you to Rusty B for joining us here on Funk Nation Radio. We will be playing that track coming up, so stay tuned for that and keep it locked in here on Funk Nation Radio. Thank you so much. Let me just stop recording really quick. <laughs> thank you so much for the interview. I appreciate it. Oh, man, this was such a dope interview. This is definitely one of my best interviews, so thank really? you. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it felt good. You had good energy, great questions, so thank you. Oh, no, I appreciate it. This is Like, I've been listening to the dentist. All of my haters, man, they hate it. They can't stand it. I'm winning. See, I'm going to push it to the limit till I can't no more. And I never back down. My main raise no See, the struggle, it made me a better me. I am the person they thought I would never be. I'm cooking now, and they want the recipe. See, I could give it to you, but you can't whip it like me. And I could give you every pack, but you can't cook it like me. See, I'm a pro when these they all rookies to me. I'm the biggest boat of the all. Some they